Welcome to Peg Warmers. I'm Kevin, and I'm here to talk about toys. Today, we are discussing New York Toy Fair 2023. There's some pretty big news about Toy Fair. Um, this was the first Toy Fair we've had in several years due to COVID. Uh, the last one they had was literally like a month before the shutdown, and then we haven't had a Toy Fair since then. This year, Toy Fair was a little bit different. Uh, some of the big players weren't quite as involved. Attendance maybe was down a little bit. I don't have hard numbers on that, but it felt that way. And it's been announced that Toy Fair 2024 just isn't happening. There's no, no Toy Fair next year. 2025 will be the last New York Toy Fair. And then in 2026, it's going to start moving to New Orleans. So it's going to be a whole new... Uh, convention center, you know, a whole new setup, a whole new shindig. Um, so that might mean that 2025 is the last year I get to attend Toy Fair uh, because, you know, New York is very doable for me. Uh, it's expensive to travel there and stay there, but I don't need airfare. I, I just take a train, uh, but I don't foresee traveling to New Orleans being in the cards. So with that being said, I had a blast at New York Toy Fair. It's one of my favorite toy events of the year. I've gotten to go several times uh, through my YouTube channel. Toy Fair is only open to uh, industry, toy industry people and buyers and then approved press. So you can't just attend for the fun of it. Um, that's part of what makes it magical though is like it's not like a con where you're packed in and it's crowded to walk. It is a trade show. Business is being conducted. You need appointments to visit most of the booths, even once you're in, you know, once you have a badge to be in. So it's it's very interesting the way it's run. Uh, but I went up to New York City, hung out with my buddy Chris from Long's Toys. Uh, I've mentioned him on the channel before, and he, we actually did a live episode of the show. Chris and I shared a hotel room, howled around pretty much the whole day. We made, you know, our appointments together, and uh, it was a really good time. Toy Fair just has, like, the most fun atmosphere. They start it off every time with a parade. They have like a band, a marching band, not not a, like a school marching band, but like a like a New New Orleans jazz band kind of thing, parading around with a bunch of mascots from some of the brands. <laughs> So that's always like a fun way to kick off Toy Fair. And just everybody is in a good mood. There's toys everywhere, bright colors everywhere. Just a lot of fun. So Friday night, Chris and I hung out with Pixel Dan. We got to, you know, walk around the city a little bit. We checked out Midtown Comics. We went to FAO Schwartz, grabbed some food. Uh, and then Saturday morning, boom, showtime at 9 as soon as we were able to get on the show floor. We headed to Super 7. I was hoping they were going to have some big reveals there. Uh, I was maybe just slightly underwhelmed, not in what they had there, but just that there wasn't anything like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're showing this off. Um, it was a lot of stuff that we've seen before in, in some form or another. Obviously, the G.I. Joe reaction mothership was there for Cobra, their big crowdfunded item that's going to get more details announced at Comic-Con in a few weeks in New York. Um, the ship is enormous. It's a giant cobra-shaped airship. Um, it has panels that will be removable with playset areas inside, but they're saving that reveal basically for Comic-Con. There's a little image online, like a little animated GIF that shows the panels being removed, but really doesn't let you see the inside. They did have some G.I. Joe and Thundercats prototypes on display, which was really cool to see, you know, as they keep working through these waves. Another item that I was really blown away by was the fully painted... Ninja Turtles Party Wagon. This looks fantastic. I'm very excited to get this. Uh, it's far more exciting looking than the Thunder Tank, you know. Um, it just pops with colors. It looks really, really cool. There's actually going to be like a little thank you pack in with it with like a sheet of stickers and some other stuff because it's taking longer than they had expected. One of the designers, Kyle, was talking to Chris and I about that the one day. And the stuff I'm showing here is just a little snippet of what all they had there. They were showing off product from a lot of their different brands. Uh, the one item I was really hoping to see that is announced uh, beyond like seeing something that, that had not been announced was... The Super Cyborg Krang that they've announced is a 
uh, figure from their kind of like giant robot line where the like torsos come apart and you can see inside them. This Krang's android body they're doing looks like it would scale pretty well with their Ultimates Ninja Turtles. And so it is a really nice companion piece to get for that line. I think I'm probably going to order it, but I was hoping to see it in person, but it didn't make it to the show. Then we headed over to NECA. NECA, of course, another company that makes amazing Ninja Turtles toys, uh, as well as all kinds of great horror figures and, of course, the Gargoyles line. They had an amazing display for Gargoyles with this giant clock tower um, display and all the Gargoyles figures on it. And then around the room, they had the Monster Maniacs and um, the Ninja Turtles figures and, and, and a whole bunch of other stuff that they sell. But Turtles had some cool things being shown off. Not all of it new. Some of it's new. I had fun getting to see the Usagi Jumbo 4-pack in person and the giant Krang android. I mean, it's huge. It's it's incredible. Um, they also had their turtle van there as well as the, the box to that, which I think was a reveal. The, the artwork on the box was pretty new. All in all, it was pretty cool. We also did pop over to the kid robot side of their booth and they had some fun D&D plush figures there that I or plushies that I was cracking up about the beholder and and Tiamat later on that day we had an appointment with Spin Masters Spin Masters is the company that makes Paw Patrol uh, but they also have the four inch DC license they do kind of like kitty DC toys and so while we were at their booth we got to check out this large scale Batman Adventures figure that has all kinds of clip on accessories as well as a vehicle like a super deluxe vehicle for their four inch line it is a robot that converts into a batmobile and a bat wing it like breaks apart to form two big vehicles and then the tank part can shoot out a little bat cycle giving it three vehicles and it comes with an exclusive batman uh, lots of cool stuff with that we did actually get to check out like they had two sections of their booth the other section was more kind of what's in retail currently and we got to look at the four inch figures and we talked about, you know, the stuff they're doing for Blue Beetle and things like that. They also had a really cool Gravedigger remote control vehicle. And they make really nice RC toys. Um, and so this tracked Gravedigger could do like pop a wheelies and spins and was just really fun to drive um, and apparently it's all terrain so it can actually go on water which some of their uh, foam tired vehicles have been able to do before this had foam on the bottom and then the the way the treads are made they have like little little flippers on it in a way that wick the water to make it be able to drive on water so land and water it's pretty fun Oh, Spin Master also had air hog cars that suction to the wall, and you could drive them around on the wall. It's a total wall climber, ceiling climber, you need it. You can go wherever. And I can also drive on the ground, but it's not as exciting. That was a pretty cool concept. We even mentioned about them possibly doing branded air hog toys eventually, like the Batwing or the Batmobile that could drive on the wall or the ceiling. Could be pretty fun. Of course, we saw some of the other classic brands while we were there, like Hatchimals and Paw Patrol. But I figured that's not really uh, what you guys are here for. But they did give us a tech deck and a Hatchimal to take home, which was really nice of them. I really enjoy Spin Masters. I visited their booth many times with the old format of the channel, the SEO Tour Review. We always covered the Paw Patrol stuff, and uh, they make a good quality product. Uh, really rugged toys for kids. Do you guys remember Homies? Little tiny figures that came in like the little quarter vending machines, the bubble machines at the grocery store. Oh my gosh. I loved them. I had a ton of them. I, maybe I should do an episode about Homies sometime. Uh, but they're back. Uh, it looks like they're going to be released in multi-packs. They had some masks and things on display. They had a small booth, but it was fun to see that brand again. Trick or Treat Studios. You may have seen that they were doing a Playmates-esque version of Toxie from the Toxic Crusaders. Well, they had three other figures there. They had Kilimov, the bad guy, who is, again, inspired by that original Playmates line, but all new sculpt with some additional features. They also had Yvonne, who was going to be released in the second wave of Toxic Crusaders, but got scrapped. Her body got used for April O'Neil, uh, the Ravishing Reporter figure. So this was an all-new version of her that they've kind of tooled up based on the original one that has her accessories, which had never been tooled, like her accordion. And then they also had Mayor Grody, who is 
this kind of grotesque orange skinned guy. He's got like grenades on a strap, kind of like Toxie, and just a real weird figure that, again, didn't get released. They have plans to do more with that line, and I'm pretty excited to see where that goes because it's cool when toy companies produce some of these unreleased toys from back in the day so we can now kind of complete the collection we always thought we'd have from, you know, pictures in those old catalogs and things like that. In kind of the main lobby of the Javits Center where the convention is held, uh, kind of actually in the area where you could get without a badge before you, you get into, like, the trade room floors, they had a nice display for Toy of the Year. The Toy Foundation does these awards, and there's different categories, and people vote on them. And, uh, you know, it's a big deal for these companies to be able to say they had the Toy of the Year. And, and so, you know, Playmates had Toy of the Year for vehicle play with the turtle van from the new movie. And Barbie had, uh, like, Brand of the Year with the with the Barbie license. Um, Squishmallows, and there was a pottery wheel, and lots of different things that got Toy of the Year for their specific category. But I always check it out. It's always worth seeing, um, you know... And it's fun for these companies to kind of get a little bit of recognition, especially for some of the small companies. Uh, You know, it's a really big deal when they get Toy of the Year. The Loyal Subjects. This is a brand, a smaller toy company that really kind of started out making like little vinyl guys and, and then more articulated action figures. And they've really grown as a brand to do a lot more different types of toys. And the first thing that I saw there was Rainbow Bright. I am a big Rainbow Bright fan. I don't apologize for that. I loved the cartoon show as a kid, and so I was very excited to get into their booth and be able to check out the Rainbow Bright product. They are doing the larger scale dolls with the yarn hair like they did back in the day. They're doing action, or fashion dolls is the correct term, not action dolls. Fashion dolls, so they have like rooted hair and, um, you know, actual like fabric clothing, but are articulated action figures. They're doing some PVC style figures, as well as some little cutie, super deformed type guys. A really nice, different uh, array of characters. I did see a little representation from Starlight, Rainbow Bright's horse, one of my favorite characters. There was a little bit of twink action, her little sidekick sprite buddy, but no bad guys. And I mentioned that Murky and Lurky are my favorite part of that show. Um, They said I wasn't the first person to bring it up, so, you know, maybe if the line does well when they add more characters because they didn't have all of the... uh, kitties you know from the from the different each color of the rainbow in all of the different form factors maybe we'll get to see murky and lurky because i would love some action figures of them that would be fantastic they had a very similar product lineup for strawberry shortcake with dolls and figurines and you know the pvcs they actually had a little play set for strawberry shortcake so that was kind of cool to see Ryan something a little bit different there but something that feels very classic for that brand And then, of course, they have a line of Ninja Turtles figures. One side of their display for that showed off some figures that come with comic books based on Krang's Android body and Super Shredder, as well as kind of all their cartoon-based figures. And then on the other side of that was their IDW figures, which is really the cool thing I think Loyal Subject is doing. It's their kind of little footprint in the turtle market that's very unique for them. Nobody else is making IDW comic book turtles. They had some with comics, there's a Raft motorcycle, all individual figures. It's just a really nice lineup. We also got a chance to hit up Super Impulse. I don't know if you guys know about Super Impulse. They kind of make um, gimmicky gift shop type toys. Their their big line is World's Smallest. They're these little tiny miniaturized versions of old toys or, or current games. They all have some sort of functionality to them. Some's like the actual functionality and some are some sort of simulated functionality um they've done miniature action figures like gi joe and transformers they've done the light bright they've done lincoln logs um and they showed off a whole bunch of stuff there was a little plush barney there was masters of the universe he-man and skeletor rock'em sock'em robots that were pretty cool um in their action figure line they just added jay and silent bob so a lot of fun stuff there oh they had a, a world smalls big wheel that was pretty cool and then one of their new form factors is called pop taters and these are potato head figures based on pop culture so the facial pieces make them look like bob ross or jay and silent bob or the ninja turtles or uh some of the guys from kiss and they come in these like tubes and they're stackable so you can display them that way or you can mix and match the parts they also each come with one like traditional 
potato head part. Just kind of a fun, goofy way to have fun with Potato Head and well, as well as some of their other licenses. Funko had like a street this year. Um, usually the Funko booth is pretty big and wide and open. They show off their pops and whatever else. Um, but they've also bought Mondo, which does some really cool statues and uh, some other brands that are all kind of consolidated into Funko. So they had this like street with little shops, which was a pretty neat set up. Chris and I spent quite a bit of time at Jazzwares. Of course, they're famous for Squishmallows and Roblox toys. They're doing Pokemon stuff, um, but they had a new section called The Vault, and... Here we go, Chris. Open the vault. Oh. Chris opened up these giant doors to reveal uh, this new brand that they're doing. It's their own, like, Hasbro Pulse or um, Matt Mattel Creations kind of thing. It's their web store for selling, you know, sort of that collector product. So they can sell directly to the consumers. They don't necessarily need the retail support on some of these things. They may eventually do some crowdfunded items. Inside the vault, we saw toys for Fortnite. We saw Call of Duty. We saw some their Star Wars brand of in-scale miniature ships with little tiny figurines. Uh, a lot of cool stuff that's going to end up being on their vault website, which should be a tab on their, their regular website. They had an amazing Fortnite action figure display with the battle bus and all these guys dropping. Uh, really just creative way of displaying a ton of figures there. They had a beautiful display for their Star Wars line. They were showing off some new costumes. So Jazzwares doing officially licensed Star Wars and Marvel costumes. Uh, this Darth Vader was pretty incredible. They were saying Darth Vader is going to cost about $1,000 and come with a storage crate for it. But it has the entire costume minus the shoes. Like, there's no there's no boots. There's, like, leg coverings. And you wear your own black shoes with it. Um, you'd have to get your own lightsaber. But they may be doing some accessories down the road, depending on how licensing works out. So doing, like, kid costumes. They also had a huge display for AEW Wrestling, uh, which was pretty cool. Somebody put a lot of time into setting up that whole thing and making the little scene. A booth that we didn't really plan to visit, but we were just walking by, was Moose Toys, and they were demonstrating Beast Lab. And Beast Lab is this beaker that you put some chemicals into, you, you add some powder into the top, and you twist some knobs, and steam comes out, and eventually the liquid drains, and your action figure is released. It's born. This is Magic Mixies for boys. If you've never heard of Magic Mixies, this was a, like, plush animal that came out of like a crystal ball that had the fog and smoke similar effects it was one of the hottest toys last year for christmas so now we have a more boy centric version it was pretty cool though the lady that did the demo did a great job with it and so i wanted to mention that for sure in our video we finished saturday off at the bandai booth and the guys from bandai were fantastic now it helped that chris knew a bunch of them uh from some common rider events that they had done before, some promotional things uh, at Power Morphicon. So, like they they were super friendly with him, and that so that helped the whole conversation. But we hung out there for like an hour. We actually closed the show, like the show floor was closed, and we had to leave um, at the end of the day. And uh, but we talked forever. We walked around the whole booth, got a tour of all their stuff, the Tomagochis, as well as the action figure brands, and then we just talked about life and toys and. I mean, just everything. It was it was uh, a highlight of the show floor for me. Not so much about toys, but just connecting with people. They had their anime heroes line with a whole bunch of really cool One Piece figures. Some new figures for Tekken. They're starting a line for Tekken, um, the fighting game. So they had a couple of different packs that they were showing off of those guys. There were lots of figures from the Ultimate Legends line that looked fantastic in their booth. They had a really nice display case of vinyl Godzilla figures that uh, I love. They just looked fantastic. The you know they that Japanese vinyl style. Um, like I grew up playing with a lot of those monsters, uh, but these are from some of the newer movies, so it's kind of cool to see the the modern figures with the old aesthetic. There was a Digimon figure from Figure Rise. It was a, a style of figures they did. It looked really cool. It was very striking in the display case. Of course, they had a big section on Gundam. I loved this display case that showed off the scale of Gundam. And, of course, their giant, like, booth set piece was an enormous Gundam figure. 
super cool uh, booth to get to check out. And of course, there's even more stuff than I mentioned. They had the SH Figure Arts figures for Dragon Ball Z and Ultraman and just, just a ton of stuff in their booth. Saturday night, we actually went out to dinner with Nerdzoic. He has an online toy store and a YouTube channel. Uh, spent some time with him. That was a lot of fun getting to uh, get to know some new toy people. I had met him before. He was a vendor at RetroCon one time. Um, but it was fun getting to hang out with him and his buddies. Uh, then we went back to our hotel. We actually got to hang out with uh, Pixel Dan and his wife, Stina, again. Uh, just kind of worked out. And uh, we talked for hours about toys and, uh, you know, just the stuff going on in the world of collecting and the toy world. Um, it's, you know, again, like like my connection at Bandai getting to sit with Chris and Dan and just talk toys. It's my favorite thing about cons and toy shows and all that stuff is just connecting with people, getting a chance to, you know, see their thoughts and see what makes them tick about toys. Some of the other amazing sights we saw, one of the booths had this giant Elmo. It's like the biggest plush Elmo I've ever seen. <laughs> Elmo loves Toy Fair. Schleg, the people that make the, like, static dinosaurs and different animals, uh, they had this great animatronic dragon at their booth. Super cool stuff. Alpha Group, a toy company that I don't see or hear that much of, they actually had several of their Terrasect RC cars. I've actually reviewed one of those years ago. Um, but they had some new designs for that. But they also had a new brand. They also had a new brand called Quantum Hero Dinosters. And it was these humans in dinosaur armor that combined to make other mecha. I mean... There are some other brands that you might think uh, seem similar to them, and because I like those brands, you might see why I like these brands. Um, it was really up my buddy Chris's alley because he d is a huge Transformers and Henshin fan, so uh, we, we were drooling over these figures. They're not ready to be launched just yet, it seemed like, uh, but it's a brand that's coming soon. The Alpha Group also makes like Super Wing, the kid's show with the airplane that transforms, um, just to kind of give you some frame of reference on things you might have seen products from these guys before we got some time at the jada booth jada makes a lot of die cast cars they were showing off their pink slips line sort of these custom style decorated die cast cars um, but they also have a street fighter toy line they were showing off fei long ryu and chun li ken's gonna be the next figure released and they said they're doing every figure or every character from street fighter 2 i love this line they look so good, and I'm going to have to get doubles of a bunch of these because my boys have been asking me for Street Fighter toys. Uh, so I think I'm in trouble when it comes to this line. They also had a Mega Man line uh, because they're working with Capcom. They had three figures on display, Iceman, Fireman, and Mega Man. This line has potential to be huge, uh, obviously, if the toy line does well. They plan to do more figures, and I'm very excited about that. I don't know if you guys know Preternia.com. He has a Twitter page um always showing off great toy news and and has lots of great toy insight we actually got to meet him while we were at the jada booth and talk to him a little bit uh it was really good to get to connect with him um i know chris has talked to him online a little bit and i obviously follow him um so it was another opportunity to kind of connect with somebody that i've watched their work for a while but hadn't really met before jada also had some mini play sets they had a um, little Jurassic Park gate that go works with those little tiny micro-machine-sized cars that they've released. They also had Dom Toretto's house from Fast and Furious. These little sets were really cool. I did ask if there was any chance we would see more G.I. Joe or Transformers. I would love to see uh, some little play sets that would work with them. Maybe the Ark stuck in the mountain or maybe um, G.I. Joe Headquarters. Because I was really hoping we would get more of those micro vehicles. Um, they said that their their relationship has not ended, uh, but there's nothing to announce currently. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. I did stop by the Games Workshop booth. Some of you guys know that I'm a big uh, fan of Warhammer 40,000. I love the lore. I love the the look of the characters. I used to play the game very avidly, and I still paint miniatures from the game. Uh, so I stopped by that booth just to see what was going on there. Of course, they're promoting 10th edition, the newest version of the rules. And I got this Getting Started with Warhammer 40,000 pack. comes with two miniatures. Um, they gave that to me as a member of the press, so I thought that was kind of fun. Uh, so this is my first Primaris Space Marine because I haven't bought any of the new style Space Marines yet. So that's kind of interesting and kind of fun. And of course, it's got a, a Termagant there. 
but the the most recent figures I've bought have been uh, Gene Steeler Cult, so they're kind of right on the same border as the Tyranids. Um, so I have some of the modern ish Tyranid figures. Shout out to Games Workshop for hooking me up with that little pack. And kind of the last booth that I want to talk about was Playmates. Um, I don't know how they ended up at the end here. I didn't write anything down in my notes because they didn't let us film. Uh, so they had a press event, which they usually do. Um, they kind of lined everybody up. We got to meet the Turtles. You know, they had, they had uh, you know, costumed actors, that, which was great. Costumed characters. Um, they looked fantastic. And, uh, we got to go in in, in small chunks of people. Because they had a lot of things in their booth that was sort of under embargo, basically things that tie into future uh, the, anim- the the next animated series, basically, and they weren't releasing all that stuff to the public yet. They were mostly just showing it off to like the people that are going to order toys for the stores. They weren't letting us uh, record stuff in there. There were some things in there that you technically could have taken pictures of, and you know if you check out Pixel Dan's social media or his YouTube videos, you'll get to see that stuff. Um, but while we were all in there in one big press group, they weren't letting us take any pictures. Um, they showed off their retro line, which the big announcement for that part is they're going to do the 2002 Turtles, uh, just the four Turtles, as part of that wave of reissue stuff that they've been doing. Um, but that's kind of fun to see some new versions of the Turtles kind of getting done in that. They did the 90s uh, Movie Star Turtles in that line already, and then, of, of course, a bunch of figures like the the storage shells and and the you know a whole bunch of other guys in that reissue line um they showed off of course the movie figures uh from mutant mayhem some of the new stuff that's coming up they showed off they're doing the rest of the baby so they did those turtle toddlers in two packs they're doing pretty much all the other like evil mutants as the little toddlers um and they're also going to do a splinter figure in his like 20s outfit when he's wearing the t-shirt when he takes the turtles up to Times Square and then gets chased. So there's more stuff coming from the movie, but there's also a new cartoon show that's going to happen. Oh, they also mentioned they're doing figures of the turtles in their outfits they wear to high school at the end of the movie. I, we didn't get to see those, though. Uh, but there's a cartoon show that's coming that's going to be sort of in the style of Mutant Mayhem, sort of a continuation of that story. Uh, Ray Filet is going to get a figure in that line because he doesn't have a figure in the movie line. There was also a version of Genghis Frog who was going to have some accessories and paint that makes you think of the vintage action figure with the sunglasses and the his shirt and things like that. Uh, lots of other fun stuff. I can't specifically remember all of it, but uh, oh, there were some like turtles that you're going to squeeze. They have like a whoopee cushion them and they fart. I know my boys are going to love those. They're 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 pretty funny, but definitely potty humor. Uh, and Playmates was kind enough to hook us up with a. 2023 Comic-Con figure. Uh, Everybody that was in my group that went through got Leonardo. I don't know if they had different cases, um, but these Comic-Con figures, if you've never seen them, have some kind of like premium packaging here. And the deco on them matches the art style in the movie uh, a little bit more. So it has more of the... more of the hash marks and things on them like they look in the movie. So that was pretty cool. It was really nice of them to hook us up with that for coming to the press event. They also had a really big display of Miraculous Ladybug stuff. Uh, Again, we couldn't photograph that. I don't know if you've ever seen that show. It is uh, a teenage girl in Paris who can transform like a Power Ranger, basically. Um, And she gets special powers and she fights crime. And all her friends eventually get special powers or become bad guys or become bad guys and then become good guys. Because Hawk Moth, the bad guy, can like akumatize people by sending little butterflies to them and turning them into evil people. Uh, I know more about this show than I probably should, but my stepsons love Miraculous Ladybug, and it's actually pretty entertaining. So by the time we got done walking around the convention center for two days, I was exhausted. Uh, Man, kills your feet. It's the super fun atmosphere there, but uh, rushing around, trying to make appointments, trying to schedule appointments... It's tricky. I wanted to see Todd McFarlane's booth, but I, we couldn't get in there. They were out of appointments. I've, I've never really had good luck with McFarlane toys with sc- scoring an appointment. I get it. You know, they cater to the bigger YouTube channels. And, of course, before any of the press, they cater to buyers. All of the toy companies are that way. They're here to try to, you know, sell product to people. It's a, it's a trade show. So, it, you know, if you know a PR person or someone that works at the company, sometimes it makes it a little easier to schedule an appointment. So once you have an in, it helps. Uh, but people in the toy industry also change companies a lot, and the companies get different 
uh, PR firms to help them out different years. So it is a challenge sometimes to to make these appointments and get in to see the booths, uh, but it is always a lot of fun, and I really uh, enjoy the experience I've had in the years I've gotten to go to Toy Fair. And I hope you enjoyed this recap. I, I know I went quick and I just kind of hit the highlights of things. I hope I didn't leave out anything super important. Um, you know, there's other people that were covering the news of Toy Fair. You know, I'm sure the Foosh had more stuff. I saw those guys there. Preternia, who I mentioned, you know, his his Twitter page had a ton of stuff. You know, my buddy Chris Long, who I was with, you can check out his social media for more stuff. And, of course, Pixel Dan, who is just the man at covering Toy Fair. If you need to see a, a tour, a walkthrough of a booth, and hear directly from the top guy, you know, Brian Flynn from Super 7, Randy Falk from NECA, or whoever it happens to be, Pixel Dan's got you covered. Um, all great stuff. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Consider joining us on Patreon if you want to support the channel financially. And thanks for hanging on the peg with me.